There are many reasons why you may have to manually focus your camera. You might be using a manual lens, such as a cinema lens or a vintage lens. Your camera may just not have autofocus. In fact, as you move into the world of cinema cameras, most will not. So focusing manually is going to be one of the most valuable skills you can learn. Manual focus gives you control over your image, and the more mastery and control you have over your image, the better those images are going to be. So here are eight tips for getting great focus manually. Most external camera monitors and most cameras themselves have a magnification option, which is usually represented by a magnifying glass. Some of these can magnify two times, four times, or even 10 times into your image. When you're looking to get proper focus, this magnification tool is a lifesaver. Punch in with your magnification function, set your focus when zoomed in. This will give you a higher degree of accuracy and judging that focus than when you are looking at the entire image. Once you've set your focus in magnification, return to your full frame image and start recording. This is another setting that most camera monitors and some cameras have a specific function for. When activated, this provides a red or green outline around the parts of your image that your camera currently judges as in focus. If you turn this on, these red lines will tell you where your focus is set and help you more easily identify where your focus point is. Especially in bright environments, focus peaking can really help you keep your focus dialed in. Just be aware, focus peaking is not always 100% accurate and the variance can trip you up. Combine it with your magnification option and don't rely on it entirely. I set my Pocket 6K Pro's focus peaking to the mid-level, as this is actually more accurate than when set to 100%. Another way to enhance focus peaking is to change your monitor output to black and white, as this makes the focus lines easier to see. The Pocket 6K Pro has an amazing 5-inch monitor, quite possibly the best in-camera monitor on the market. But many cameras have much smaller, lower resolution LCD screens. The best way to see what's in focus is to view your image on a nice large screen. A bigger picture equals bigger subjects in frame. Bigger subjects in frame equals easier to see when you have that subject in focus. So consider buying an external monitor to help you judge your focus. I use a 5 inch Atomos Shinobi with many of my cameras. But if you can get a 7 inch external monitor, you'll be giving yourself the best opportunity for finding focus easily. Sorry fellas, but this is a case where 7 inches is always going to be better than 5. Look at the size of that thing! Just remember, not all monitors are created equal, and having a higher resolution monitor is also going to be important for judging focus accurately. Yes, you can adjust your focus with your hand, but a much more accurate way to adjust focus will be using a follow focus. You will also need to purchase gear rings for your lenses and a rail mount system on the front of your camera to place the follow focus. Gear rings can be picked up very affordably online and they can just remain on your lens. Using your hand to make focus adjustments can also introduce unwanted camera movement, while a follow focus is less likely to do this. Making fine incremental adjustments with a follow focus wheel is also easier and so you can be more precise. A follow focus also allows you to create hard stops, which is a point where the focus wheel stops according to where you've set it. Or you can simply mark your focus points along the wheel. Get your subject to show their movement within a scene and set your focus points where they begin and end their movement. This way your subject can repeat their action and when you reach that mark on the focus wheel, you know they'll be in focus every time. I use the Fokka DP300, which is a very cheap follow focus that does the job. You can also get electronically controlled follow focuses such as the Tilta Nano, but in my experience, especially starting out, it's better to keep things simple with a manual follow focus. All manual everything. One of my biggest tips to get good manual focus is what you focus on. In fact, if there was anything that helped me the most when I was learning to manually focus, it was this tip from one of my cinematographer friends. He told me to focus on the eyes. Your subject's eyes are the key. Eyes are the window to the soul. They are what convey emotion and what connects us, the viewer, to your image. They are also the window to getting perfect focus. So if you're filming a person, 
punch in and focus on their eyes. Get their eyes sharp and you know that your focus is going to be good. I don't want to get very technical here, but to put it as simply as possible, a high f-stop will make it easier to find focus. A low f-stop will make it harder to find focus. The lower your f-stop, the shallower your depth of field, and so your plane of focus, that is the section of your image that is in focus at any one time, becomes narrower. When you increase your f-stop, this focal plane becomes wider and therefore more of your image will be in focus at any one time. When your focal plane is narrow, the margin for error for having your subject in focus is also very narrow. The dreamy blurry background is lovely, but if your subject is always falling out of focus or moving about too much, it's going to be almost impossible to keep them in focus manually. Try increasing your f-stop to compensate. For example, if you're filming at f2.8, try going to f4. You'll increase your focal plane and increase the margin for error and therefore increase your ability to keep your subject in focus consistently when you make manual adjustments. Certain things are going to be more difficult for you to do when you're focusing manually, so be aware of that when you're planning your setups. Getting manual focus on a subject that doesn't move towards you is going to be easier because you only have to set your focus once. Likewise, if a subject moves side to side in frame, they will remain on the same focal plane. If they move forward or backward, the focal plane will change and you will need to shift your focus to accommodate this. Ask your subject to rehearse more complicated movements so you can practice changing your focus with them. Or start by setting your focus. Put down a marker and have your subject move into focus for you rather than trying to follow them in. Start by keeping your setups and movements short and simple. This is another great tip from a cinematographer friend of mine. Don't be afraid to refocus as you're filming a scene. Sometimes it can be hard to know if your subject is still in focus in the middle of filming. One of the easiest tricks to double check this is simply readjust and shift your focus out and back in again until you're sure your subject is sharp. Going from soft to sharp can help you reassess your focal point very quickly. Depending on what you're filming, the moment where you readjust this focus can be removed in the edit. And one moment of refocusing is much better than ruining an entire take where your subject is slightly out of focus. And that's it. Put those manual focusing tips into practice on your next shoot and you'll find the process of focusing to be a lot less intimidating. If you found these tips useful, consider giving this a like and subscribing to the channel. And if you'd like to help me to continue to create these videos, consider using my affiliate links or watching one of my feature films for free on Amazon or Tubi. All links in the description. As always, I am The Savage Filmmaker and I'll see you when I see you.